Do I really need a protein skimmer? The answer is no. Nearly everything in the tank is optional. However, the real question worth asking is, is a skimmer worth it? That's a system design question. What is the problem that I'm trying to address with the skimmer? And is it the best tool for the job? What you're going to find is a skimmer is not the best solution for many things, but the collective functions and redundancy it provides makes the skimmer juice worth the squeeze for many. You'll know the answer to worth it on your specific tank in just a moment. Challenge one, organic food and waste removal. My experience is most skimmer implementations are capable of removing somewhere between 30 and 80% of the organic waste from the tank. In theory, from a nutrient perspective alone, that reduces the size or frequency requirements for water changes by 30 to 80%. Somewhere in that range is a threshold where the skimmer is worth it to most reefers. Half that 30 to 80% removal disparity is simply because most skimmers are treated like set it and forget it items where I plug it in and leave it alone. That will produce low to average results. Others actively tune the skimmer for ideal foam and collection, and they'll produce higher end results using the exact same tool. The other half is every skimmer has its own max capability. So if advanced or active tuning techniques alone are not working, changing tools to one that's capable of the desired job may be necessary. That can be going bigger, but just as often smaller. The basics of that is if you don't feed a lot, a small skimmer with minimal air is the best tool. Going bigger will not produce better results, quite the opposite. If you feed a lot, a larger skimmer with more air will increase capability or capacity to remove waste. The best options are those that help us span the gap between those two. This series will provide a deeper understanding of the science behind foam production, collection, and skimmer design, and make selecting the right tool for the right job a lot easier. That said, ideal performance is not always necessary because a skimmer is often not designed to be or implemented as the sole filter on most tanks, so its value is not standalone, but how it combines with other efforts, often implemented with particulate filtration like felt socks or felt automatic rollers and any reasonable water change schedule. Net result is a chain of redundant filters where the felt removes the organic particles, whole foods or waste, the skimmer, the dissolved organics, the felt misses, and the water changes diluting with the skimmer misses. This combo may be the most time-tested, widely used approach to reefing. How effective it is based on how much thought and consistent effort you put into each step. In addition, today's reefers are utilizing techniques that leverage the value of the skimmer in different ways. Biggest modern advancement is a skimmer combined with organic carbon dosing. This combo is a complete solution to excess nutrients, even on tanks that are heavily fed. When I say carbon dosing, I'm not talking about that black activated carbon that filters the water. Carbon dosing is based on dosing carbon stored in organic molecules, most often carbohydrates, alcohols, vinegars, or bioplastics. Specifically solutions like Brightwell's Biofuel, Nios Zero, Aquaforest Nitrophos Minus, Zeovit, and Biopellets. Lots of solutions for carbon dosing like this. What happens is the bacteria rapidly consume those carbon sources, multiply explosively, and along with the carbon, they bioaccumulate nitrate and phosphate into their cells. The bacteria is attractive to that air-water interface of the foam or get caught up in it, and the protein skimmer then removes the nutrient-laden bacteria. It's a solution that works almost too well in many cases, strips the water of all inorganic nutrients. The best solutions will actually add back in organic nutrition like amino acids or coral foods back to the tank to provide for the coral's nitrogen and phosphorus needs. In this case, a high functioning skimmer is what I describe as invaluable because most modern approaches to carbon dosing require a skimmer to work. Same thing with ozone in a skimmer, the skimmer becomes very high value. While ozone is not a modern approach, today's reefers are using it a lot more commonly as an alternative to activated carbon and crystal clear, odor-free water because the hobby's found more desirable ways to use ozone, such as just an hour or so in the middle of the night, safety for the home, and then ORP controlled for safety for the tank. The worth it question, just a personal preference on the value of crystal clear water. All that said, where a skimmer is of what I describe questionable value, or at least performing redundant services, the first of which is smaller tanks. On a five to 20 gallon tank, I believe water changes are cheaper, easier, and more effective than a skimmer. And it avoids unsightly hang on gear. On tanks this size, grabbing a pinch grip and just scooping out some water and sending it down the drain and then replacing it can be a 60 second maneuver. If you put a container of mixed salt water near or under the tank, a one to two gallon water change is just way easier than buying and maintaining a skimmer. 
In fact, on something like a max spec dice, you can throw a couple ATO containers below and set up auto water changes. Even on a 40 gallon breeder, you could debate the value of using that cabinet space to make water changes easier or even automated versus running a sump. A no skimmer, really no filter at all, AWC approach that worked for us is the E170. No skimmer, simply because it's a small, elegant tank and I didn't want to see gear all over it. And we also wanted it to be ultra low maintenance with as little work as possible. The solution was 3% daily water changes on an auto water changer. Net result, the tank thrived for years and only maintenance was mix up a bin of salt water every few months for the auto water changer to pull from. Dilution is effective, even in high coral density tanks like this one. I could have put a skimmer on this tank, in fact, it even came with one, but I don't think that it would have been worth it from just the maintenance and visual appeal aspects alone. The AWC approach just worked on this tank. 3% daily is effectively 20% a week, so notably more than most people do in a tank this size, but still just over two boxes of salt a year. Another instance where a skimmer is a lower value investment for me is on tanks with highly effective refugiums or scrubbers. The beauty of a refugium is once it gets going, it's near effortless. Algae grows, soaks up or bioaccumulates the excess nutrient pollution into its biomass, occasionally grabs some, throw it in the trash to export the pollution from the tank. A properly set up fuge is capable of managing inorganic nutrients on its own and doesn't need supportive filters to do the job. The skimmer's role is probably more of a redundant function in this case. Occasionally a fuge can struggle for an unknown reason, so it's nice that the skimmer is there. However, if I was running a fuge, a skimmer would not be a high priority item for me to allocate a limited tank budget to. This of course is debatable, and the answer is specific to your exact install. That said, you might notice that almost all the 52SE tanks have skimmers and refugiums. To be frank, that's partially because these are dreamlike systems, redundancy is important for long-term documented tanks, and I'm also a pretty big fan of ozone and run it on virtually all of my systems now. In fact, the Anemone tank has the Tunes Comline skimmer, predominantly only because it fit in the space available and incorporates ozone into that system. So is a skimmer juice worth the squeeze? Something that you can decide for yourself with the worth it question now answered. The next question is, how does it work? The answer is right here. How does a protein skimmer work? The forces behind the foam. Episode three in the Beerus TV guide to protein skimmers.